IT project management, MGT2. Hey, bro. Bam, the class had three tags. Come on now, dog. And that third one was a Come month. Come on, man. I'm going to tell you about it. What up again, tech fam? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Now, as you may or may not know, I recently started a master's program at WGU and I've been documenting my experience and giving tips here on the channel in this playlist. So this is a continuation of that. Now, this is the second class I've completed since I started on the first. And according to the title and intro, it is IT Project Management MGT2. So I activated this class on the fifth and I got a completion for the third task on the 15th. So it was about 10 days from start to finish. Now, the third task, I got it sent back to me twice for two revisions. So I didn't get a pass until the third time. The first two tasks was relatively easy. So I'm not going to spend hardly no time in this video talking about them. I'm going to focus all of my explanations and tips and experience on task three. I feel like that'll be the most benefit to anybody who ends up watching this and happen to be taking this degree program because um, it was a doozy. OK, for task one, just watch all the videos and follow all the explanations. Preparing for task one in the course material is where you want to focus your attention at. It's going to walk you through. It's going to give you all information. It's pretty self-explanatory, shouldn't have no problem. Task two, same deal. Watch preparing for task two in the course material. Watch all the videos, follow all the explanations. You shouldn't have no problem. Task three, you probably gonna have a problem. It feels like to me that it was designed to cause you a problem. It's like the Kobayashi Maru maneuver from Star Trek. Like they designed you this task to be failed so that you could have to come back and learn how to do it right, I guess. I don't know. It just feels like it, it's impossible to pass this thing on the first time. But hey, maybe that's just me. Anyway, so I'm gonna spend all the time that I'm talking about this course on this video, concentrating on task three. I'm gonna give you some tips that without a doubt is gonna help you pass this course without a thousand revisions. So here we go, right? Now task three has five parts, really seven, but the last two is just procedural, like making sure you notate any sources you use. So we're gonna go through all five of the parts. This is only task three, it's got five parts, just to let you know. Part one, task three, pretty self-explanatory. It's really a piece of cake not a problem at all right then we go to part two this is where you have to be careful at, right and this is where it can all go wrong and if you don't do this right nothing you do after this will be right so pay attention to what i'm saying here right now i just said my task three got sent back to me twice for revisions and this is part of the reason i didn't pay close attention to part two I thought I could skim through the video and I'm pretty good at picking things up just by looking at them. I'm just going, oh, I got it. Boom. I can do this. Um, if you don't want to have to keep doing revisions, if you don't want headaches, don't do that. OK, just don't do it. Here's what you do. I'm going to give you some tips on how you can successfully navigate this task. OK, tip zero. Right. This is before you do anything, be prepared, have all the templates, all the examples, all the study material downloaded to your computer in your project folder. This is what it looks like. I'm showing it right now, right here. You see that projects. You see that I got three projects in there. This is that project inside of this folder is all of my stuff. Fam, you got to be organized and have all your stuff ready. Remember, just like I mentioned in the previous video, I'll put a, a tab or something somewhere around here where you can go watch that. If you haven't watched it, you're going to do this task a section at a time. You're going to concentrate on the first section, do it, then go to the second section, then the third section in that manner as you go along. And then you're going to be filling out 
your master template as you go along. They give you templates for your submission, right? You're going to take that template that they give you for your submission and you're going to save a copy of it in your folder as master. And this is the one you're going to turn in when you've done working on it. This will be the master one. And then you still have the original template that they gave you so you can kind of contrast them, right? Be prepared, download everything, have your folder ready and have all this stuff open. When you start looking at the course material, have all this stuff open and ready where you can access it. You can look at it. In particular, the case study, you're gonna need a screen to have that open and on because you're gonna have to look at it in order to get information. Tip number one, watch the supplied Gantt chart video. Don't do nothing else, just watch the supply video. Pay very close attention to everything that is said in that video. Then when you're ready to start working on your chart, watch the video while you're working on your chart. Do that. Tip number two, like I said in a previous video, use the task descriptions from the course material, from the task requirements, and from the rubric. Each one gives you a little more insight on what it is you are doing. And it words things slightly different in the explanations in each one. So there's stuff in there that you could miss if you only read one of them. So read them all. And what I did was, I copied those descriptions from that part of the task, from the course material, from the requirements and from the rubric, and I pasted it all together in a paragraph in my notes page so I can read the whole thing together. And I read it and made sense of it in context together while I was beginning to work on what I was doing. So if you do that, you'll always be able to go back and refer to that note document later. It's got all three descriptions and requirements in one paragraph. You can read it again. And as you complete your work, you can read those sentences and check off the box and make sure you have everything in your explanation or your answer or your submission. Tip number three, they're going to supply you with some software. Download it, play with it, Watch a video tutorial on it. If you've never used this software before, you might want to get familiar. In particularly, you want to see how to indent and outdent the data that you're putting in this chart. Get all this figured out before you start building your chart. And that is just a insider tip right there. It's going to save you time later. It's going to save you going back. It's going to save you a headache. Now it might just be me, but this software is janky as hell, right? It looks like it's a hundred years old. It functions like it's a hundred years old. When I tell you I wanted to throw away the whole computer, fam, messing with this software was a nightmare, especially cause I, I had never used it before. I didn't even know what I was doing with the software. So it, it, it was, it was terrible. So with that being said, I wish I would have gone and played around with the software and inputted some data to see how it actually works in the calculations it does for you before I tried to just gung-ho the thing. It would have saved me a whole lot of headache. Tip number four, don't copy and paste nothing into this software, period. Just don't do it. Type it all in by hand. It's going to save you a headache later. Trust me. It's going to save you a headache later. Tip number five, when you get done inputting the data into the software and everything looks good to you, you're going to go to file information and statistics. This is where you're going to find out how long the project is scheduled to take. Don't get this information from nowhere else. And whatever that says, the duration of the project, that's what it is. Make note of that number. You're going to need it later. That's the only place you're going to get it. Tip number six, watch the video again. Check it against the work you did. I can't stress this enough, I don't think. Check it again and then move on. All right, then we're going to part three. And the first tip for part three is watch the metrics calculations demo and pay very close attention then download the formula chart and have it open 
when you're working on your analysis. Then watch the calculations demo again and work along with it while you complete your calculation spreadsheet, just like what is demonstrated in the video. Watch the whole video all the way to the very end. Something might be said that you miss that is important and it will screw you later. So pay close attention. When you satisfy, move on. Tip number one in part four, watch the video and treat it the same way you did the others. Watch it first and then watch it again while you're doing the work on yours. You might wanna play around with the line charts in Excel. Uh, there is some editing that you're gonna need to do to this chart when you're done with it that is necessary and that they don't instruct you on how to do or that you even should do it, uh, if I remember correctly. I don't even know if it's evident. You might get this sent back to you just because you don't know you need to manipulate this chart in a certain way. Right clicking on the chart is helpful. That's all I can tell you. Tip number two, you are asked to discuss the findings from the chart. You can use the example template they give you to figure out how to format your, your answer. Uh, but it doesn't have to be exactly like that. It just has to match the data that is in the chart. So the description that you write when you're discussing, it's got to make sense, but it doesn't have to be formatted exactly like they give it. But if you just want to make it easy for yourself, format it how they did. Once you're happy with that and you put it on your master sheet, move on. And those are the, the main takeaways from this task. The biggest things you really need to pay attention to. The only other thing I can say is check your work, check your work. If you want to try to get past this task without having to do multiple, multiple revisions, following these steps and tips that I've outlined in this video, you might just pull it off almost every time they get revisions back for this task. But you know, with these tips, this should help out a lot. Take your time, check everything, and then you can, you know, go ahead and do your submission to your class. And with that family, I'm gonna bring this on in. I appreciate you taking the time to check out the video. Hopefully it was helpful to you. And if it was, by all means, go ahead and press all the buttons. And if you got uh, comments or questions or wanna tell your experience with this course and this task, please leave it in the comments section. And until the next video, fam, peace.